A few videos ago, I was talking about the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 and the fact that it has a 1-inch sensor and a 20 millimeter equivalent lens with an aperture of f2 and I mentioned that this should perform like an actual 20 millimeter lens with an, with an aperture of f6 on a full frame body and this is because of the principle of equivalence so it has a 20 millimeter equivalent lens but DJI sets is an f2 now if you're applying a crop factor to the focal length in order to say it's a 12, 20 millimeter equivalent you also have to apply the crop factor to the aperture in order to get an idea of what the image is going to look like. Now, the reason I said f6 is because a one inch sensor, which the DJI Pocket 3 has, has a crop factor of three times. You have to multiply the aperture f2 times three to give you f6 to get an idea of what it's going to look like on a full frame camera. Now, a lot of people are still a bit confused by this because of the way cameras are marketed to us, with some of them being downright dishonest about the capabilities of the camera system. Now, Tony Northrup did a really good video on this a few years ago, and I will direct you to that below because he's covered all of it already, so I don't need to make a whole new video about equivalence. But what I can do is give you a practical demonstration, and I've done this by taking out my DJI Pocket 3 and my full frame camera with an actual 20 millimeter lens so that you can get an idea of how the image quality looks at different apertures and judge for yourself which one most closely resembles DJI Pocket 3. So let's have a look at the videos I took and afterwards we'll discuss. Okay, so this is the camera on f3.5. Standard mode, not night mode. the quality of that I'm walking so we're checking the stabilization as well Okay, so now the camera is on f6.3, that's f6.3, and I'm walking. So this is with the camera now set on F10. F10. So now this is also F6 on the camera where I've set the ISO to, I've removed the upper ISO limit, so now it's at ISO 16,000 it looks like. How do they compare now? So now I'm going to F10 again. ISO is now at 51,200. So that's F10 on the camera now. So now I'm going to F6 again, because F6 is what I think these two are supposed to perform the same as. 
So that's actually 6.3. I can't get F6. But we'll go with 6.3. On the screen, the Osmo looks better because because it has an OLED display, so it looks better on screen. This is F3.5. See what that OK is like. F3.5. F6.3 so if my theory is correct F10 that's F10 <laughs> Back to F six. Okay, so I hope you were able to see for yourself the difference in quality at the different apertures, but I've got my own analysis here for you. Sometimes YouTube compression can distort the differences between the video files, so I'll also include some blow-ups as I, as I go along. So starting at f3.5, you can immediately see that the image quality on the full frame camera, camera is demonstrably better, no questions. I don't, and I don't think anybody uh, would really question that even without a practical sample. Now, bear in mind, this is with the 20 to 60 millimeter zoom lens, which yeah, it's a kit lens, but it is, it is actually a good lens. The one thing I can see from this video is that the stabilization is much better on the DJI Osmo, obviously because it has a gimbal. Now at f6.3, you can see that the video from the S5 is a lot darker but as a consequence of that, it's also a lot cleaner. This is particularly evident on the tree line in the background where on the DJI, you can see a lot more detail than on the S5. Now there is a good reason for that, which I will come to later on. So to get another data point, I tried F10 and you can see that the video is a bit darker again. Um, it still looks clean though, but it's definitely not black like some people thought it might be at F10. So now what I did was I went back to F6, but I removed the upper ISO limit on the S5 and now you can see that the video from the pocket tree and the S5 now look pretty much identical as predicted mathematically. Any slight advantage you can see on a full frame camera is more coming from aspects of the lens itself based on its size and the quality of the elements. Now what do I mean when I say that? Remember this lens alone costs almost as much as this entire Osmo pocket tree. You have better quality glass, you have larger glass and that's really important for imperfections because if you have an imperfection of the same size in a very small lens or you have the same imperfection in a very large lens it's going to affect the image from the large lens less. Also the bigger proper lens is using more advanced coatings because it can accommodate the cost of doing so in the price of the lens. Now I try the S5 at f10 again and now you can see both cameras are delivering video with the same brightness but you can see that the video from the S5 is actually a bit more noisy now, as you would expect, because it's using a smaller equivalent aperture than the Osmo Pocket Tree at this point. If you look at the buildings, for example, you can see that the buildings in the S5 shot is now a lot more noisy. Now remember here, I'm just testing mathematical equivalence, and it's not going to be exact because of all these different factors that we have to take into account. Okay, so... As I said, I'm not going to make a whole new video on equivalence because I think the material out there is already sufficient. But if you ever wanted to point someone to a practical example to demonstrate that the theory is actually correct, that equivalency has to apply to the focal length as well as the aperture, then feel free to direct them to this video. Okay, that's it. Bye for now.